hello everyone uh, welcome to the channel so today we are going to see one of the important question which uh, every devops engineer will uh, ask okay so why do kubernetes need uh, so many tools like for example if you deploy one application but suddenly you will have prometheus thanos grafana alert manager service now networking tools security tools backup tools and the list keeps growing right so is uh, like uh, whether the kubernetes is so complicated or is there some other reason why we use uh, like 20 25 tools so in this video let's uh, break down like uh, what exactly get deployed and uh, why we need each tool and uh, how the observability is implemented and uh, how the devops platforms will be used across multiple things okay so let's get started so if you see in this section we are going to see the core monitoring stack okay so first one is prometheus so for example if you have multiple instances like uh, prometheus is the art of uh, matrix monitoring so every thing which comes out of the kubernetes cluster everything it will go through the prometheus okay so what exactly the enterprises uh, run uh, multiple instances like we will have prometheus app prometheus system prometheus database prometheus platform prometheus tooling and prometheus argos so why do we have like uh, multiple of these systems because we will need uh, like a workload separation and uh, uh, we will have different workloads and uh, each should be handled by different things and multi tenancy for example if it is deployed in uh, multiple uh, locations or uh, multiple uh, clusters then also we need this one and uh, different uh, retention needs like uh, each thing needs to be uh, ret retentioned uh, at certain durations for example if some uh, uh, banks or some other thing are there they need data for uh, 10 years or whatever it is because uh, for example if you have to get a statement from a bank which is of like year 2000 or something we will be able to retrieve it right so the retention uh, will differ from uh, each company to company for example we will have insurance it and then uh, banking um, travel different things right so each one will have different retention needs and isolation from uh, nice reduction like um, we should be isolated from uh, different uh, servers because uh, sub few people will have some other applications running somewhere and uh, we need to run our application separately so we have to avoid the noise okay so to get the particular thing we need uh, this one and distributed scraping for a uh, scale okay and uh, in case if we have the applications in scale then uh, for scraping also we need uh, multiple prometheus instances okay so the first tool is prometheus next comes the thanos this is for global metrics and long term storage so prometheus alone cannot uh, handle the entire traffic okay so we need something called thanos in case if you want to handle large amount of data because the scale beyond a single machine so in case if prometheus you will be able to handle like some 10 clusters or something for example let's assume you have hundreds or thousands of clusters in case if you want to handle the logs to such a large extent then uh, you need thanos okay and store data for months or years in case if you want to store the data for uh, long term you need thanos and provide uh, global querying so you can uh, query all the clusters together at a single place and deduplicate ha instances okay so it is able to manage high availability instances as well so what exactly thanos provides infinite retention via object storage object storage is nothing but like s3 bucket okay and uh, global query layer across uh, clusters and HA Prometheus deduplication and central governance so you will be able to manage everything in a central place and uh, Thanos components deployed like what are all the components that will get deployed when you install Thanos so one is Thanos query in case if you have to query anything Thanos query will be deployed and Thanos receiver Thanos ruler Thanos store gateway and Thanos multi compact so all these tools get deployed when you install Thanos so we have seen Prometheus Prometheus is for uh, small size uh, things whereas uh, thanos it's for global scale okay next one in the list is grafana okay so so in grafana it is a visualization tool so in prometheus and uh, thanos we will uh, scrap the metrics whereas in grafana we will be just visualizing the things okay so multiple grafanas will exist like grafana main for customer and uh, operations dashboard grafana read for internal dashboards grafana live for integration of uh, dashboards grafana cyroscope for profiling the dashboards okay and why do we need multiple like we will have our back policies isolation strict access controls and uh, dedicated dashboards so for these things we will be requiring uh, separate uh, grafana dashboards 
So next one in the list is alert manager. So we scrap the metrics and then we visualize it. That is fine. But uh, we need that alerts to be sent to our email or uh, some other channel, right? So we need uh, Prometheus to send uh, these alerts. So based on CPU usage, prod crash pack, node pressure, latency, and uh, business alerts. So alert manager handles all this grouping, deduplication, silence windows, and routing to email, Slack, pager duty, and service. Now all these are handled by uh, alert manager. And then we have something called open telemetry collector. Okay, so we also call it uh, OTEL collector. It is a central pipeline for all telemetry data because we will receive multiple things like logs, metrics, traces. So logs is like uh, output of certain things, and metrics is like for example we will have the metrics like 60% usage of uh, CPU or whatever it is, right? So all those metrics and traces. So everything it will be received. So processing them. And forwards to so it will it will just uh, receive all these things and then it will process okay process and forward it to tempo loki prometheus uh, remote writer or cm systems so once this is processed all these logs matrix traces it will forward it will also forward it to tempo or loki okay so what exactly is tempo so tempo is a dis distributed uh, tracking backend okay why it is needed because in case if you have to troubleshoot any of the microservices then tempo will uh, come in handy okay why it is used in case if there is some latency uh, in the uh, clusters uh, so we can track that one and in case if you have to do any of the rc analysis then also it will be very useful okay and it will also request a journey visualization like how the traffic will be flowing so all that visualization can be done within this tempo okay so this tempo will get uh, the data from open telemetry okay this open telemetry will receive and send it to tempo and tempo will process and it will help in troubleshooting and uh, fixing the latency issues and even in finding the rcs okay and we have something called etcd so if, if as soon as we see etcd it is do we will think like it is a kubernetes component like we will be seeing etcd api server kube scheduler and kube uh, things right so this is different okay this is not the kubernetes etcd cluster it is used to monitoring the components to store rule configs in case if you have some rule configurations and then state files and metadata in case if you want to save this thing so we will be using etcd so this is different from what we use it in uh, kubernetes okay so kubernetes etcd it is for uh, storing all the data which is related to the kubernetes cluster uh, um, requests and uh, responses whereas uh, this etcd it is for rule configurations state and uh, metadata and then next we have exporters okay so exporters is one of the key thing in kubernetes so all the kubernetes clusters nodes will have the exporters so what exactly this exporter will do the exporter will turn raw system data into prometheus metrics so it will send the raw metrics which are created uh, in um, kubernetes cluster into prometheus metrics okay so common exporters like node exporter cube state metrics black box exporter mysql prometheus postgres exporter so this will send the db data and jvm exporter and hardware and platform exporter so we have different types of exporters so in case if you have to uh, send any of the data from node we have node exporter and cube state for the default uh, kubernetes configuration metrics you can use cube setting metrics and black box exporter mysql and postgres exporter for uh, dbs and jvm for java memory exporter and hardware platform exporter so this will uh, send the data to prometheus or uh, whichever uh, tool and then there uh, the querying of uh, metrics will happen okay and then next we have service now forwarder they send alerts incidents and change management events directly to service now so service now is one of the change management tool which is uh, very famous and commonly used across uh, enterprises right so in case if you want to send any of the data or alerts to service now so you can uh, configure them using service now forwarder okay so they will send all the alerts incidents and change management and monitoring rules so we will have different rules because we can without defining the rules it will not send uh, alerts okay all the um, alerting tools alert managers it will not send uh, the alerts without configuring the monitoring rules like we should have alerting rules and recording rules and uh, slo and sla rules so service level objective and service level agreement rules so that uh, you will be able to maintain the high availability of the environments so you you must be defining all the monitoring rules as well okay and the next section is like why kubernetes need so many tools so why we have seen multiple tools right now so why do we need all those tools uh, so the first reason is so kubernetes is extremely distributed like it, it will not be deployed in a single region or a single uh, node 
so we will have multi, it will be distributed across multiple nodes across multiple availability zones and uh, multiple regions okay because it will be highly available so as kubernetes is extremely distributed a single app can run across 10 nodes 20 parts and 100 microservices because it has to be distributed so that even if one of the nodes goes down or one of the region goes down the data or services will be available from another region okay and also you need uh, metrics logs traces events uh, profiling api insights everything okay so one tool can't handle all of this okay so that's why uh, we need uh, multiple tooling okay and the second reason is high availability and multi cluster so enterprises run 3 10 100 uh, 1000 clusters as well okay because we ourselves we use like around 500 clusters uh, in our organization so we will need all this production place disaster recovery and then multiple prometheus servers everything has to be handled so high availability is important and uh, reason third reason is complaints and retention because all these banks telecoms insurance require like minimum data of 1 to 3 years uh, of metrics and audit trials secured incident history because if you go and ask for the bank reports which is like uh, five years ten years old also they will be giving us the reports right so they have to save all the statements so for those reasons like uh, we have need uh, multiple tools okay and enterprise dashboards like for example we will have different teams like sre app business infra so everyone needs uh, different dashboards because the requirement for each team to monitor or uh, do something is different okay so for different dashboards uh, we for different teams we need different dashboards and uh, microservices complexity so as we told uh, like kubernetes is a distributed system so distributed system requires tracking profiling and uh, dependency mapping because each tool will be dependent on the another because one will be forwarding one will be processing and then one will be doing some other task okay so each tool is dependent on uh, some other thing that's why like uh, we need uh, multiple tools in uh, kubernetes okay and section 3 like additional devops plus kubernetes tools so what are all the additional tools in devops and kubernetes we have so first one is observability and logging tools like we have something called loki so this is for the log aggregator okay so it is a lightweight scalable alternative to electric search so we will have electric search where we will be able to query all the metrics everything right so we have an alternative called loki so this is like a very lightweight and it will be very fast so this is designed for uh, kubernetes logs and uh, highly recommended and it is also cost effective it is uh, very less uh, cost uh, compared to elastic search okay and then we have something called uh, pyroscope okay this is for profiling so what exactly this will do for example we will have some uh, cpu hotspots like uh, it will be consuming more cpu due to some reason or uh, some memory leaks or in case if it, the application is functioning slow slow in case if you have to check uh, what is the exact issue then we will be using pyroscope okay and then we have fluent da or uh, uh, fluent bit so this is the log collectors used before sending logs to loki okay so before sending <coughs> logs to this uh, log aggregator we need to collect the slugs right so this fluent b will be helping in collecting the logs and sending it to loki or elastic search or s3 buckets okay so that uh, it is just uh, a tool used before uh, sending it into log aggregator and then security so when we take security we have multiple tools one is for falco so on the run it is a falco is a runtime security tool okay for example if uh, your application is running or uh, something in the during the runtime itself in case if you have to do the security scan uh, like for it will detect suspicious process executed or file access or in case some uh, unnecessary file access or network anomalies it will automatically detect okay falco and trivi so you might have already used it because uh, to scan the docker images we will use trivi so container image scanning vulnerability scanning is scanning sbo generation so for all the things trivi can be used and we have something called kiverno or uh, opi gatekeeper so this is like a uh, policy enforcement okay so for example if you need to enable any of the security or uh, image signatures and uh, all these best practices we have to use kiverno so in case if we define some policies we will be able to restrict the users uh, unnecessarily accessing something okay next we have something called platform engineering tools like argo workflow so instead of uh, um, jenkins or uh, uh, github actions we can use argo workflow okay so this runs ci cd pipelines and uh, is mainly used for machine learning purposes and uh, it also can run backup jobs cron jobs etc so this can be integrated with argo cd because this is one of the argo cd tools argo workflows okay everything will be written in yaml file so you will be able to use them okay 
and then we have something called argo rollouts so this like uh, progressively delivering uh, the changes so we have different types of argo rollouts canary blue green shadow traffic and a bit testing so everything can be done using argo rollouts okay and then external secret operator so secrets managing secrets is one of the uh, key thing okay so we have different things like uh, vault aws secret manager gcp secret manager azure key vault so these things will help us in uh, saving the secrets and uh, avoid uh, exposing the probably okay and next one is backup storage and reliability tools so backup is one of the key things right uh, because without backup in case if something goes down uh, and uh, if we don't uh, if we are not able to recover the data then it will be a big issue okay so because if we lose some important data then it is like impossible to recover right so always uh, doing backup is one of the key things in devops so we have different tools like uh, velero so backup and restore it will uh, re store uh, volumes namespaces resources clusters all the details will be saved in velero okay and then we have something called uh, k10 these like uh, enterprise is a backup and disaster recovery tool uh, it will be very helpful uh, in case if uh, we have to recover during any of the disasters okay and we have cilium so this is the next generation cni where we will be able to enforce uh, ebf networking network policies hubble service graphs to view the networking and uh, inbuilt observability so this hubble is inbuilt uh, observability tool so we will be able to monitor the traffic flow on, uh, to and from okay so this uh, we have seen in the last class in case if you have not gone through just uh, see that one and we have something called istio linked service mesh so the even Cilium can be used as Istio, but uh, in case if you want a specific tool, you can use Istio, okay? So it will help us in uh, managing the traffic and then uh, mutual TLS, lat latency monitoring and canary features like you will be able to uh, provide the traffic, like uh, split the traffic like 5%, 10%, whatever, based on the canary deployment. Uh, it will be very useful, okay? And uh, productivity tools like uh, productivity and CAC tools, we have Jenkins, GitHub Actions, Action, GitLab, uh, CI, and we also have Terraform and Crossplane for infrastructure as code, okay? So bringing everything together, so why do we need uh, 25 tools? Because Kubernetes is not just an orchestration engine, it is an ecosystem. Like uh, you will have the entire uh, pack of applications running with all the features like uh, monitoring, security, and then um, all the things are uh, included okay so we need uh, multiple tools to do that thing like a uh, single tool can't uh, do everything because in case if you take jenkins it is just for ci cd okay uh, but uh, why do we need uh, terraform in case if you want to create clusters uh, multiple times then you need uh, terraform similarly in case if you want to monitor you need uh, prometheus and grafana and then in case if you want to uh, query any of the things you need uh, um, different uh, tools right for security and everything so in case if we take kubernetes it is a big ecosystem okay so we will have something called metrics we will have logs we will have traces profiling profile enforcement security networking cacd secret management backup scaling troubleshooting complaints so this can never be achieved by single tool because each tool is able to do a complex task which is like uh, um, very tough in uh, kubernetes or uh, devops and in, our, in case if we have to achieve everything then uh, it is going to take a huge number of tools okay so obviously so in case if we are coming and working as a devops engineer we need to know most of these tools okay because we will be using them uh, knowingly or unknowingly daily in our work so these tools are uh, mandatory okay so uh, in the future classes we can see each and every tool separately as well like installation and uh, demo um, that's it guys that's it for today in case if you like please like and subscribe to the channel uh, i will catch up in the next class okay bye